Greetings from D-Lab. By special request, I'm going to install the D-Lab K1 push to talk module in a Heathkit Apache TX1. The heaviest transmitter I've ever had in the shop. Should be a good time. Here we go. So in preparation for this task, you need an extremely strong work surface. The Apache weighs about 110 pounds. So also be very careful when you're lifting it because it's easy to get your fingers pinched under this thing. And if you do that, you will remember it for weeks to come. All right, I got all the screws out. Let's see if I can push this thing out of the cabinet. I think probably about 30 pounds of the weight is just in this shell itself. Very sturdy construction. You sure won't find anything like this made today. So when you're taking the radio out of the cabinet, you've got to be super careful because there's a little cooling fan up here. And there's about a quarter inch of clearance. So if you try to lift it as you pull it out, you could damage this thing and that would not be good. All right, it's about out. This is where the severe finger pinching can come in, right? So I'm gonna be very careful. There we go. Well, here's the bottom side of the Apache. So the challenge is, is where do I locate the push to talk module, okay? In a Viking 1 and 2, the plate switch is down here, and this whole area is open, so I can just simply glue it to the chassis and route the wires. But in this case, the plate switch is buried way up there, right? So it's like, it's not going there. That would be impossible to get a hold of those terminals. Luckily, I can get to the rear of the mic jack to add the new type switching one, but the question now is, where does the module go? So if you look back here in this RF cavity, there's room, but we sure don't want that module in this area exposed to the RF. That could be a real hazard, right? So the best location is in this cavity right here that has the high voltage filter caps. So you may ask, why would you want to put it in that compartment? Well, right here, is the back of the accessory socket which is right here on the back of the transmitter. Now if you look at the schematic that socket is actually wired right across that front panel plate switch, right? So that switching there you can file it down to pin 4 this side here you can file it over here to pin 1. So I'm going to wire the push to talk circuit in the rear compartment I'm going to parallel these terminals of the accessory socket and we'll simply swing our push-to-talk grounding line up to the new mic jack on the front panel. For better detail on that accessory socket, look at figure 44 on page 102 of your manual. There it is, and they're showing you how to remotely key the transmitter. And that's what we're going to do with the push-to-talk module. So it's going to go across pins 1 and 8, 3 and 4. So let's get the module in. Well, there's the K1 getting ready to be put into the Apache. Now you may wonder, hey, where are you going to get your 6 volt AC to power the module? Well, that is available right here on the accessory socket. So the 6 volt filament wiring will go to pins 7 and 8. So all the wiring in the Apache simply goes to the accessory socket. Very cool. So where am I going to mount the K1 module? Right on top of these filter caps. So I have some adhesive here. And simply put the module at an angle to where it seats down inside of the caps. So there's at least three-eighths of an inch from the board to this choke, I believe. So I will let that set up while I route the push-to-talk line, get the uh, front panel jack mounted. I've got the push to talk wire routed down along the chassis. It's waiting for the installation of the TRS jack. I'd highly recommend that you use one of these because it'll go right in the stock hole of the old mic jack. Alright, so we got a little issue here. Look at the shaft length 
on the new jack. Look at the shaft length on the old one. It has to be extra long because it has to clear not only the chassis panel, but this trim plate. So the only way that I'm going to be able to make this fit without having to do some major modifications is remove this plate and open that hole to clear the new plug that goes in for the mic jack. Didn't expect that one. Alright, so the jack just makes it through this panel because of the thickness. So unfortunately, you cannot put a lock washer behind it to stop this thing from spinning over time. So what I did, if you look in here, you see the jack, the ground right there on that lug swings up to the control next to it and I'm going to solder to that and that will give me a little bit of relief effort to stop that thing from spinning. Alright, I opened up the hole to clear the mic jack. It's time to get this plate back on the knobs and we'll get to the wiring. Alright, the wiring is complete. You gotta work in this hole. I'm not saying it's easy. You just have to take your time and pay very close attention to the numbers on that socket. So eight is over there, seven is towards you, six, five, four, etc. Don't get that reversed or you'll have a fireworks show. All right, so at this point, you want to check and double check your connections. I'm going to take my ohm meter and go across the contacts and make sure they line up. So I'm in pins 8 and 1 right now. When I flip that transmit switch, there's the ohm meter telling me I'm good to go. I'm going to do the same for pins 3 and 4, and I can physically see the filament lines going to 7. So at this point, I believe it's safe to flip around. All right, a quick note on the TRS jack wiring. Your push-to-talk lead is going to go to the tip, okay? The mic lead will go to the ring. Don't reverse that. Also put a little piece of heat shrink tubing on the mic high because it's very close to grounds, as you can see. One other thing, you can see there's a pretty good gap between that choke and the board, but if you feel uncomfortable with that, you can put some insulated material on that top side of the circuit board. All right, so here is the hookup diagram for the Apache TX1 transmitter push to talk installation. I'm not going to kid you guys, this is a little more involved than the typical push to talk installation because of the cramped areas in the Apache. I had to work in a little two inch square area with some lighting to make sure that I got those leads correct on that rear eight pin accessory socket. Okay, But if you take your time, you'll have no issues at all, just double check your work. As you can see, it's a great addition to the Apache. So if you want one of these kits, drop me a line. I've got many in stock and an updated hookup diagram, which you can see here. Good luck, guys. Thanks for supporting D-Lab. Grab this. Hold on a second. Hold on. You gotta get Rodney in there. Rodney's strong. Okay, hit it. Do you need the, the glass too or no? Oh, well, I gotta have that. She's rolling. You're rolling? Yeah, she's rolling. All right, so I've got Rex, and it's WA6. GYC. GYC, and I got Bob. KB9 and JP. Bob came up from Illinois and dropped off a beautiful NC300, and Rex, like, loaded his van <laughs> with the equipment. All right, so what we're going to do, I've got the Apache here. You got to look at the Apache. Apache. Okay. Got the Apache. I just installed the push-to-talk module. So this is the initial test. Got the TRS jack installed. Microphonium is connected. So here we go. Good sign. Light comes on. Let's see if we got any audio. Oh, yeah. Oh, We're yeah. talking. Your so. wine blocks the. Oh, yeah. Beer. Well, that's Rodney's fault. Got Rodney <laughs> over there in the wine. All right. So you can see the watt meter. Wow. Look at the it's forward modulation on that thing. So we're dead keying at about 100 watts. And uh, she's going way over 200. That's. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's a PEP meter, I guess. Yeah. I would say we got some great forward modulation. And the D-Lab push to talk is working. First installation into a TX1. Hey. Yeah. 
Yep. Good deal.